Hello viewers, you're watching Student's Diary and today's our topic is about the conversion of the pyruvate to acetyl-CoA which is a kind of gateway to the Krebs cycle or TCA cycle. Uh, we know that glucose which is a 6 carbon molecule when entered into the glycolysis which is a 10 step process it is converted into the pyruvate. Two molecules of the pyruvates are generated from one molecule of the glucose and that pyruvate which is a 3 carbon molecule that is converted into acetyl-CoA and uh, that acetyl-CoA then enter into the mitochondria where it uh, uh, it, it go into the cycle which is known as a Krebs, Krebs cycle and, uh, and the end product of that is carbon dioxide and a lot of uh, energy that we gain from it. So um, when we talk about the cellular respiration it consists of three stages. The first stage is the conversion of the uh, in energy rich molecule or we can say that the complex molecule into the simplest form. So the uh, Acetyl-CoA is the kind of intermediate which is common to all of these uh, three biomolecules which include amino acids, fatty acid and glucose. And we had studied glucose in our previous lecture, the metabolism of carbohydrates in detail. So it will come through the glycolysis process and will be converted into pyruvate. And uh, in today's topic, we will discuss in detail that how this pyruvate is converted into acetyl-CoA with the help of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. The next stage of the cellular respiration is that the conversion of this acetyl-CoA uh, into uh, into in a, uh, to put it into oxidation process. So that happened when that acetyl-CO is entered into the uh, membrane-bound organelles, uh, which is known as mitochondria. And in the mitochondria, it will go into the citric acid cycle. We will discuss it in our let, later uh, lecture as well. So uh, here it will be converted into carbon dioxide and uh, three NADH2 molecules and one FADH2 molecules will be produced with, uh, 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 with that oxidation of the acetyl-CoA. And third process will be the electron uh, transport chain and, uh, and that will be kind of oxidative phosphorylation. So all these radio reduced form of the NADH2 and FADH2 will be uh, like carried out into electron transport chain where it will be uh, transferred that electron and uh, will result in uh, conversion of the uh, adenine diphosphate into ATP. So in short we can say that that NADH which has been produced in the citric acid cycle or in the glycolysis process will be cash over here and it will be converted into ATP. We know that an NADH molecule can give rise to 3 or 2.5 ATP and similarly FADH2 can give rise to 2 ATP. How this process of the uh, acetyl CoA formation takes place. So before entering into the citric acid cycle, sugar, fatty acid and many amino acids are degraded to the acetyl group of acetyl CoA. So it's act like as a kind of fuel inputs into the Krebs cycle. And this is the a common intermediates to all these uh, biomolecules. But however, in case of amino acids, uh, amino acid can be degraded to some uh, other cycle intermediates. So uh, apart from carbohydrates and fatty acids, amino acids might have some other roots as well uh, which can result in some other cycles. So pyruvate uh, is first oxidized to acetyl-CoA and then carbon dioxide with the help of enzyme which is known as pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. It's a very famous and very important enzyme because it consists of uh, three subunits. We will discuss it. Uh, Pyruvate dehydrogenase is uh, a cluster of multiple copies of H3 enzyme located in uh, the mitochondria of the eukaryotic cells while it is uh, uh, present in the cytosol of the bacteria. So this is the difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells that in prokaryotes it's present in the cytosol while in the eukaryotes it's present in the mitochondria. Uh, the process of the oxidation of the pyruvate to uh, acetyl-CoA uh, required five uh, different coenzymes and with uh, out of five that four of these coenzymes will require certain vitamins will which, which will be attached to it which will assist it in conversion of that pyruvate into the acetyl-CoA. So the enzymes which are involved in this uh, complex uh, 
the conversion of the pyruvate to acetyl CoA is thiamine pyrophosphate, which we know as TPP, and uh, the in vitamins which are uh, helping it is the thiamine. While similarly, the another one is coenzyme is the flavin adenine dinucleotide, and the uh, vitamins which are uh, known as riboflavin. Similarly, coenzyme CoA, which is a kind of very important uh, a coenzyme. It will require pentothenate uh, vitamins in uh, for uh, completing the process and similarly nicotine adenine dinucleotide will require niacin so uh, deficiency of any of these vitamin will um, disrupt the process of the conversion of the pyruvate to uh, acetyl coa so the vitamins are very much important for these coenzymes and uh, last but not the least is a lipoate Lipoate is an also very important coenzyme which will help in the conversion of the pyruvate to acetyl CoA. Now we will come to the reaction of the uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Uh, we know that two pyruvates are formed from a glucose unit, which is we know that pyruvate is consists of three carbon molecules, and uh, with the help of uh, uh, coenzyme A, that uh, SH group will be. Uh, uh, incorporated into the pyruvate so that PDH complex which is consist of three uh, subunits uh, E1, E2 and E3 all these three will be utilized and uh, the E1 is basically the pyruvate dehydrogenase while E2 is dihydrolipoyl transacetylase and E3 is dihydrolipoyl dehydrogenase so all these three uh, subunits will work in a systematic way and it will convert with the addition of the conversion of the two NAD molecules because this process will uh, take place uh, twice because two pyruvates are present so two NAD will be converted into uh, NADH molecules which will be that later on it will be cached in electron transport chain uh, so that pyruvate with the help of that coenzyme A will be converted into two acetyl CoA with the uh, having because two is acetyl CoA is a two carbon molecule so of course there will be a decarboxylation reaction so carbon dioxide will be released and uh, as it happened twice so two carbon molecules will be released in the process now this two acetyl CoA or acetyl CoA is now ready to be uh, uh, taken up or enter into the uh, mitochondria where it can uh, be uh, ended up into the Krebs cycle and further ATP will be produced from this acetyl CoA. Here, few things uh, are very much important to remember that uh, these uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex uh, enzymes are uh, inhibited by arsenic and mercuric ion and so that can stop the process of that oxidative uh, uh, breakdown or energy production so uh, arsenic is a kind of potent poisons and uh, uh, small doses of it is enough to uh, cause death similarly mercuric ion has also kind of a poisonous effect if taken up uh, taken by human body that can inhibit this uh, enzyme Similarly, uh, if there is a, some inherited deficiency of this uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, then this conversion of the pyruvate to acetyl CoA may not happen. So that will result in the conversion of the pyruvate to lactic acid. So that kind of uh, will lead to a kind of uh, uh, another pathway which will result in the lactic acid accumulation. Now we will come to the regulation of the pyruvate dehydrogenase. Uh, we know that um, uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase uh, complex uh, is enzyme when it is in dephosphorylated form it remain uh, it will be an active form while if it is in a phosphorylated form so it will be in inactive form and we also know that these are kinase are the enzymes which are involved in the phosphorylation process so these kinase enzymes are uh, regulated by the different factors when there are a lot amount of ATP, NADH and acetyl-CoA present in the body, uh, in the cells, so that will uh, 
uh, stimulate the process because there is no more need of the ATP. So that will stimulate the PDH kinase to phosphorylate this PDH complex. So once this PDH complex will be phosphorylated, it will become inactive. So no more pyruvate will be converted to acetyl-CoA. So the, uh, because already energy are enough, NADH is enough, and acetyl-CoA is enough. So there will be no need of PDH to remain active. So for that's why it will be phosphorylated with the help of PDH kinase and it will be in an active form. However, if there are uh, high concentration of NAD uh, coenzyme A, right? remember it's coenzyme A, not acetyl-CoA. So coenzyme A and pyruvate. So if the, all these contents are in high amount, it will uh, be kindly have an in, in inhibitory effect on this pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase enzyme. Uh, however, uh, there are certain uh, factors which will uh, like uh, help in dephosphorylation of this uh, PDH complex. When it is in an active form, uh, of course, it will be in a phosphorylated form. So if there is a high amount of calcium uh, because of muscular activity and higher amount of magnesium or there are high amount of insulin and adipose tissues, uh, so that will give the signal to pyruvate dehydrogenase phosphatase enzyme. So that phosphatase enzyme will remove this phosphate molecule from the PDH complex and this PDH pyruvate dehydrogenase will become, an, uh, become active. So this will become active when this phosphate will be removed. So this uh, and, and that will result in uh, active PDH complex. So that will uh, increase more amount of the pyruvate conversion into acetyl-CoA. So this was all about the um, conversion of the uh, pyruvate dehydrogenase into acetyl-CoA. Now, once the acetyl-CoA is formed, it will be ready to enter into the Krebs cycle inside the mitochondria.